Well, Nye Bevan was born in 1897, down in 1960. I mean, he was a miners' leader in his early life. He was connected very much with hospitals in the 20s and 30s for the mining union. Became an MP for Ebervale in 1929, of course, continued until his death in that seat. And during the, 20, during the 30s, 40s and 50s and 60s, his grave achievements, I suppose, were to represent the work, working class, the unemployed in the 30s, to be the great opponent of Winston Churchill in the 40s, to be the uh, inspirer, the man behind, the originator of the modern National Health Service. He nationalised the health service, he created a nationalised health service, not a national health service. And I suppose in the, in the 50s and 60s, the great critic of empires or nations that would still see themselves as colonial bully boys. I suppose that's as how he would see himself. And somebody will realise the dangers of um, nuclear, uh, nuclear power. Um, many, many years ago, Harold Macmillan was, in, was interviewed by Ludovic Kennedy in the early 80s on the, the great orators he met. He talked about how David Lloyd George had inspired him and said, well, you know, you, you, you're trying to do what a prime minister's doing, three points of thing. But he actually said, look, three or four great orators of the 20th century were Churchill, were David Lloyd George and Nye Bevan. So to Harold Macmillan, who saw him as a personal friend, he regarded him as one of the great performers. And even his, not only his friends, but even his enemies accepted his great performance. I mean, in the 1950s, uh, I think it was Lloyd Boyle and Talwin, the various conservatives who were the, you know, the, the people who were receiving the attack admired the fact how, you know, the, how great the oratory was. And I think the real skill of oratory, uh, oratory, you can make great speeches, but to be more than a great speech, I think you've got to have the situation is right, it's got to be a turning point, it's got to be a moment. Uh, it's, the forum's got to be right. And then if the speech is right as well, then it just hits you as a tremendous shock. And there's a phrase about Nye Bevan, and that is that he could pluck out shimmering phrases in that context. And even if he was on the losing side, which he often was in parliamentary debates with Churchill, you, 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 you still knew his impact. So I think it was always recognised as that. Also, he had a certain style. I mean, he was, uh, you know, he was attacked by his enemies, uh, you know, uh, and was seen, you know, seen as that, uh, uh, you know, that scoundrel, that scummy thing. You know, there were there were all sorts of names that used against him. But in addition to to that, um, he had a tremendous way of presenting material. Of course, one thing about him, um, perhaps. Um, was distinctive is that because he had a stutter and he used that stutter very very effectively I mean his real attack went on the Tories and he said the Lord and the, 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 the vermin you know so you get the the 1940s the health debate the vermin clubs emerging by the Conservatives and he had that ability to time things to actually um, you know effectively make his point and I suppose the great sign of an or a great um, features of an orator, the, the real talent is that ability to almost make the audience and the atmosphere your own. You're not actually give, delivering a lecture, you're taking people into a performance. And that's really what he was doing. Harold Macmillan did make the point in 1983 is that this is the first election in which we have not had oratory, we've had television. I think Bevan would have come across tremendously effectively. But going back a little bit, I mean, you know, there are many areas where, in fact, Bevan was not successful on the unemployed issue. He, um, uh, in the 30s, he was on the losing side. But he said, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're, uh, it's a tapestry, the financial tapestry to, to, to tie up the working class. He had all sorts of comments there. But he had that ability to resonate ideas. And I mean, I always think of one in the general in the uh, health situation, 1945 to 40, 46 to 48, which is, of course, his great achievement. Um, and that is 1946 to 48. Is he, he, he actually somebody talks about him connecting the local to the national, and there's that beautiful phrase, you know, uh, if a bedpan drops in Bedwelty, it will resonate around Whitehall. It's that sort of power. He could, he, could, he could talk for, 
for people very effectively. And even his enemies realised what a tremendous performer he was. And to some, he was therefore a dangerous man. But if one asks about his achievements in the past, his great achievement, his, the only great achievement really, I suppose, was the National Health Service. But he spoke in many other areas very effectively. Some of his great speeches were made at the time of Suez. Tom Dial, uh, Mr Nasser. Archer said in 1964, I really regret the fact that, um, you know, Bavans died, because he, he said you can no longer be a, a bully boy. You, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, nuclear power has, has solidified uh, and stalemated um, powers. They can't any longer threaten because the ultimate sanction is too is too too horrific to think about. So I think it's that sort of thing. Coming back to your last question, how would he have performed today? I think it would have been regarded as one of the great speakers. You still think of the great speakers in the House of Commons, and there aren't too many, who you know, are actually great orators. I mean, the last great orator in the House of Commons was, I think, almost undoubtedly, Michael Foote. You know, his speech at the type, time of uh, the Westland dispute over helicopters, when, in fact, Heseltine was th threatening Thatcher, it was tremendous. I heard it on radio. He just had both sides in stitches because he knew the opportunities had been missed. And he played those sides. And that really is something that Foote himself uh, should be remembered for, tremendous orator. But there haven't been too many since 1983. Um, uh, at odd moments, people like uh, Blair, Tony Blair, might have reached that level. Um, I'm not sure if any other politician has reached that level of, of ability. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.